Today we're going to talk about the MOS device and its regions of operation. So what I have drawn here at the top is two transistors in a CMOS process, which means complementary metal oxide semiconductor. And what this means is we have both NMOS and PMOS transistors in the same process. Uh, now, if we're using discrete transistors, uh, some of these things like the bulk terminal aren't applicable, but uh, we can generalize it to the uh, integrated circuit process. So here we go, if we're making a CMOS transistor, uh, particularly starting with the NMOS, we're going to start with a P- substrate. So we're going to dope the substrate lightly with a P-type material. Then to form the NMOS transistor, we're going to make two N wells, N plus, as such. And these are going to become the source or the drain. And we're not going to label source or drain just yet because they depend upon the voltage that we tie to them. We're going to make a contact to the bulk so that we can set the bulk potential at the voltage that we would like. And nominally, we're going to set this at a very low voltage, uh, hopefully close to ground, so that we can keep the, diode, the parasitic diodes off. Now finally, what makes a MOS transistor uh, different is that the control terminal, the gate, is separated from the channel by a thin oxide layer that's made of silicon dioxide. In a PMOS device, we're going to start with that same P-well, but we're going to put an, uh, an N plus implant in uh, that's called an N-well. Inside of this N well, we're going to form our PMOS transistor by putting P plus implants into that N plus implant. These are the source of drain of the PMOS transistor. And we need to make a contact to the N well, so we'll put an N plus region. And nominally, we're going to tie this to the highest voltage in the process, uh, typically VDD. The gate is still separated from the channel by uh, an oxide and that oxide is still silicon dioxide. Okay, so this is how we form our transistors. Now, when we're dealing with these in circuit analysis, we have standard symbols for the transistors. For the NMOS transistor, if we are going to explicitly label the source in the drain, we might put an arrow. The arrow always goes from the gate terminal towards the source terminal. And hence, the other terminal would be the drain. Now, we also have that bulk terminal that we had uh, labeled up at the top. So remember, this is our bulk terminal. And the bulk terminal we can tie to a number of different uh, potentials. Typically, we tie it to ground, but sometimes we might tie it directly to the source, for instance. Now, on a PMOS transistor, we still have gate. We would, instead of the arrow going between the gate and the source, we're going to put the arrow between, uh, going in the opposite direction from the source to the gate. Then the other terminal would be the drain. And of course, we would also have a bulk terminal. Now, sometimes the bulk terminals will have an arrow drawn to represent the direction of a PN junction. In a bulk CMOS process, oftentimes we don't have a choice where we tie the, uh, the, the uh, bulk. So uh, in a bulk process, our bulk symbol is going to look a little bit different. We're going to always assume that the bulk is tied to ground for the NMOS transistor. For the PMOS transistor, we're going to always assume that the bulk is tied to VDD. So we don't need to draw arrows. In this case, our transistor terminals, other than the gate, are going to be determined by the potential of the, uh, of the uh, terminal. Now on the PMOS transistor, we're going to draw a bubble on the gate to denote that it has complementary behavior to the NMOS. Uh, in other words, large voltages turn the NMOS on while small voltages turn the PMOS on. So here I'm going to label the source and drain is ambiguous since it'll determine how we connect the transistor. And we'll learn 
uh, how to connect the uh, how those uh, potentials are defined in a moment. But nominally, in an NMOS transistor, the drain is at the highest voltage. when compared to the source, and the source would be at the lowest voltage. In a PMOS, we have the opposite situation. The source is at the highest V, and the drain is at the lowest V. All right, next we'll start looking at regions of operation.